Hey everybody, it's Davina here. I am uh, out of town on vacation and so happy to be out of the city. Um, I decided I wanted to make a video while I was here just to share some of this beauty with you uh, because I feel very privileged um, in this moment to, like I said, be out of Los Angeles and be in Northern California right now, enjoying the trees and the nature and the fresh air. Um, I, you've heard me said over and over again, um, nature is so grounding and it's so important right now as we're going through all of these things to make time to get out um, into nature in a safe way, um, you know, however that is. So when I'm at home in Los Angeles, I still go to the local parks and uh, hiking trails and things like that. Um, I just want to talk about self-care today. Um, Again, there's, there's so many things going on in the world that we don't have control over, uh, including you know, other people. We just don't. What we do have um, control over is ourselves and the choices that we make. And are we gonna ch take, make choices that uh, are self-caring, um, nurturing, nourishing for ourselves, self-protective, uh, not against others, but just in a way that, that we're honoring ourselves and we're caring for ourselves. I think that's really important right now. Um, you know, all the different ways that you can take care of yourself right now to get through this time period and make the best of it. I mean, this year, it's amazing. You know, it's, it's uh, been three months since I started doing these videos uh, on a regular basis. And I know when the lockdown started in March, you know, many people thought it was going to be two weeks. Um, I felt like it was going to be longer, but I, th I thought it was going to be like June 1st or something. Like everything will go back to normal around June 1st. But I felt like we were going to be in it for like a couple of months. And here we are, you know, um, I think it's 24 days past, it's almost a month past June 1st. And, you know, this year is going to be about... Uh, being careful, being safe, being respectful, being a good neighbor, being a good citizen. Um, you know, we can live in a dog eat dog world where we just, you know, care about ourselves and kind of, you know, screw the other person. Or we can do things that are self nourishing and also respectful of those around us. Um, the indigenous people of the Americas had a philosophy of take only what you need. Um, and they also had the philosophy of use all that you take. So, you know, don't hoard. Um, just just uh, if, you, if you take a life of an animal, for example, use everything, put all of it to good use. Uh, the, the ultimate recycling, right? And then the Europeans came over and there was this like, you know, I don't know if you've ever seen these pictures of a man standing next to thousands of buffalo skulls where they just killed buffaloes, tons of buffaloes. The white um, settlers, the white Europeans just killed tons of buffaloes and traded their hides and did all this stuff and, and um, almost wiped out the buffalo. And that was radically different from the uh, indigenous Americans whose approach was to you know, if they, if they took a life of a buffalo, to use the skin for shelter, um, to use the meat for food, to use the other parts for clothing, uh, tools, the bones for tools. Um, you know, there's, there's more to it. You can read about it. But just, you know, take only what you need. Bless the animal. Bless the plant. And then, again, the European settler, settlers came over and they just, were, you know, hoarded. So much hoarding, taking more than they need. And we saw that with the beginning of the pandemic, right? Um, people taking more toilet paper than they needed, people taking all of these, uh, you know, um, Clorox wipes and, you know, trying to, to just hoard and profit and then creating um, scarcity. And I just invite you to think, you know, what kind of world do you want to live in? Do you want to live in a, a world where everyone hoards and is like, you know, dog eat dog and um, screw you, I got here first? Uh, or do you want to be in a cooperative uh, world, a sharing world, a, a world where we honor and respect our planet? Imagine what that would look like if we started to create that, that world. Um, we have gone so off kilter, we're out of balance. We know it's hurting the planet. We know it's hurting our bodies. Um, 
we know that you know everything is not distributed equally and so as we again we move into 2020 a year of 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 clear vision of clear thinking 2020 vision what do we want to create what kind of world do we want to create um again some people aren't going to be around for much longer uh and um they don't care they're just like i'm going to get mine and you know die with as many toys as i can and then others of us want to be around for a while right we want to um, have a world to leave to you know, other generations of people that our, our children, our grandchildren, um, our great grandchildren, whether they're ours biologically or not, we want to leave something to our, our descendants. Some of you want to leave something to the animals. Uh, and we could choose to live a better life. Um, this week was the first week uh, I stopped at a coffee shop. I have not um, been at a coffee shop for three months. <laughs> which is pretty amazing if you know me <laughs> um i'm at least a one one time or two, two time a day uh coffee person coffee shop person i love my coffee shops and i'm happy to support those businesses but um lately i just you know make coffee at home and brings down the carbon footprint and all of that but on this trip i um, did stop and support a, a uh, local coffee shop um here uh, that has good politics where I'm at. And it was interesting for the first time in, in three months to um, buy a coffee from a place. And again, it, it did generate waste, right? Like I got a to-go cup and a top. And even though it's like more biodegradable than other places, it's still um, creating uh, junk. And what I noticed was that the coffee I make at home is actually better and cheaper and better for the environment. And that um, I don't miss consumerism. Now I'm not suggesting we don't circulate money or resources, um, but just imagine, I don't, I don't know about you, but um, I have not uh, been the level of consumer that I was before. Then I wasn't a huge consumer before, but definitely way more of a consumer than in, um, than in COVID. Oh, look at that, there's a deer behind me, amazing. See, don't we want to leave this planet for the other animals and leave land for them to eat and be safe? Ah, oh, it's amazing. Um, what a blessing. And deers are, are a symbol of innocence. So just imagine returning to a place of innocence. Imagine turning to a world where we don't have guns and police brutality and where we live harmoniously in the land and we don't take more than we need. and we are conscious consumers, conscious consumers, and conscious about, you know, maybe we don't need all of the different kinds of food or entertainment experiences. That, that's the other thing I was thinking about too, where we're up here on this land and um, when you're just present in nature and just walking, like, like that deer there, you can just sit and watch the deer. You can sit and watch the trees watch the birds we have become so disconnected from our own essential nature and from nature that we want to be entertained we want you know bigger and bolder uh, and brighter and more intense experiences you know, going to the movies used to be you'd go to a movie and you'd watch a story about people and yeah you know there was some action here and there but now our movies are are just like spectacle you know, um, they're mostly like uh, comic book movies, uh, Marvel movies. They're just huge spectacle and destruction. Why do we need that? And what would happen if, again, we came back to our essential nature and instead of needing to be entertained and have like wild experiences and paying more and more, you know, for crazier and more wild experiences and we just walked lightly on the land and we read books and we connected with one another and we just spent more time being present and quiet coexisting with one another and with nature imagine what that would be like 
imagine if um, we all had, you know, we, we had more time, we weren't working so hard, so we had more time, and we could, um, you know, have our own gardens. I mean, we, we've created so much technology so that we didn't have to do the things that we had to do. So then we just have to work harder to not have to do things. And then when we do have time off, we don't have any connections, so we want to be entertained. Uh, what if we worked less hard, lived more simply, and had time to grow our own, you know, vegetables? Um, and you know, people are enjoying baking bread. Um, we had more time to just be with one another, be with our families, be with our friends. What if we had um, more time to go for walks? What if we, you know, instead of buying our, our eggs and chickens at a slaughter from a slaughterhouse at the grocery store, what if we had our own chickens? And I know a lot of people did. I, I remember going to Iowa, gosh, back in 2009 with my book, Love Warriors. I was working on marriage equality and seeing in the city of Des Moines, so many people had their own uh, chicken coops in, the, you know, close to the city. How cool that was. And uh, where I'm at in Northern California, it's known for its back to the land um, mentality from the late 60s, early 70s, you know, over 50 years ago. Um, Self-sufficiency. What if we did that? What if we created small communities together where we shared in the work of the garden, we shared in the work of the chickens, we, you know, had a cow or two and milked the cow if we're going to have dairy, make cheese, or goats, you know? Just imagine a more simple life. What would be possible? Um, I know that the, the area um, in Seattle, the Chaz area or whatever, is really controversial. At the same time, how amazing that within like a couple of weeks, they planted community gardens. They focused on um, creating collaborative things. I, I get that it's not a utopia and everything worked out, but... I love the vision of it, right? The, the original intention, um, providing health care for people, bringing in food and water, caring for one another. Uh, what if something was more thought out? That was sort of a last minute thing. Imagine, I mean, you know what, that, what the possibilities are. So, you know, again, I don't know what all the possibilities are. I'm just, uh, I know that uh, something better is emerging and, and can be possible. And, um, you know, necessity is the mother of invention, and we will need to create something better, um, or we're going to die. Kind of like those old bumper stickers that used to say, recycle or die. That's kind of where we're at. So anyway, so thanks for being with me. Thanks for enjoying this incredible nature with me. Again, I feel so lucky. Um, yeah, wish I lived here, but uh, I'm happy to, to be here now and happy to share this with you. And I'm um, just going to invite you and myself to let's meditate, right? Let's just go into that beautiful sacred silence together. And as we do, you know, you can hear, maybe you can hear the sounds of the wind in the trees. It's really incredible. All right. So let's just turn within. I invite you to receive a breath. Mm, and this breath I'm receiving is incredible. I smell the redwoods and the ocean and the grass. And it's just rich, knowing there was nothing that we need to do to be worthy of this breath that we're breathing in, that we're receiving. That the universe is absolutely breathing us, nurturing us. How good it is to come together and meditate Mm, and know the love, the oneness, the allness of life, that we are all connected. As the Lakota say, mitakoye oyasin, we are all related. We are all one. And as Dr. King said, we are all connected in a interconnected garment. I can't remember how he said it. It's so beautiful, but we're all related. And I just invite you to go into the sacred silence with me.
Mm. So good to meditate. I'm going to have to go in though because there are mosquitoes. <laughs> you can see it. See how big that mosquito is? There's a lot of mosquitoes. So it's going to be time to go in. But before I do, I just want to do a shout out to the indigenous people of this land. This is the Pomo land here, Pomo uh, indigenous people, and just want to acknowledge them, their ancestors, and their descendants. Um, may they continue to and we just bless them seven generations back and seven generations future. I um, also want to do a shout out to um, my uh, uh, ancestors that, that uh, shared this land with me, the women who love women, um, Carmen Goodyear and Lori York, uh, who connected me to this land years ago when I met them and shared with me the rich history of uh, this area as a, a powerful women's back to the land uh, movement area. Uh, you can check out their film, um, Women on the Land. Um, you can look that up online and watch that video. It's amazing, amazing video, uh, movie on um, documentary on um, women's back to land movement in the uh, late 1960s, early 70s, and their contemporaries today. And I also want to just say, you know, wear a mask, wear a mask, protect yourself and others. Um, today I was at the gas station and somebody just right next to me sneezed a horrendously loud sneeze and um, i was glad i was wearing a mask um if you're wondering why just you know you it's like wearing a seatbelt. you might be a great driver right and you're like i'm not going to run into anybody i don't need to wear a seatbelt. um but then somebody else is drunk driving or they're not paying attention and they hit you and you're not wearing the seatbelt, and so you go flying out of the car or hit your head into the windshield that kind of thing and you get hurt so um Wear, wear a mask, keep, keep yourself safe, keep your, your family safe, um, you know, don't be a super spreader. <laughs> Just take care of yourself and take care of the people around you. Um, and, and walk on this planet lightly and with love and you'll be doing yourself and everyone else a favor. Thank you, I appreciate that. All right, peace and blessings, take care. <laughs>